In this video, we bring you a champion strictly swing breakdown from West Coast Swing legends Robert Royston and Brandy Guild. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. From WestCoastSwingOnline.com. If you haven't visited, you should go do that. But at the end of the video. So the clip you're watching now is from West Coast Swing legends Robert Royston and Brandy Guild. It's a magical video that was, uh, that's was that been viewed about a million times because it's awesome. So we're going to show you the move, um, our version of it, and then we will break it down. We're going to have a little discussion about how you can create a move like this yourself. So it looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Anchor step. We do it back the other way. We have one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Anchor step. So here's what I want to talk about in the move because that can look amazingly complex like you're never able to do it. We've broken down two moves from this video and they actually have the exact same setup for both magical moves. Megan's going to link those in the description below the other video that we broke down. But what I want you to understand and the way we teach is the building blocks are things that you already know. Now maybe you won't get to this exact version of the pattern, but the building blocks that get us there um, are what we need to understand and master. And the reason why we've broken down these two moves of Robert and why it's awesome is Robert is a master of a handful of things. He actually doesn't lead a lot of crazy complex stuff. He has a set of stuff that he just masters and he can pull out at will and be magical and he is a little bit magical. But first things first, this is based off an inside turn. If we did it from a left hand, we'd have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. That's the base of it, right? Now, if we did that inside turn from uh, right to right, like something like one, two, three, and four, five, and six, that might be the next thing to do to the pattern. Now, most of you guys might have done one or both of those moves. The second aspect that he uses, or they use, is a rock and go at the end of it. So they do. If we did actually building this, if we did two hands, we did the prep, we picked up this hand and root, and you have something like a bow tie, right? That would be maybe the third progression, right? So straight out of beginner class, we're building up to becoming a legend, a legend right here in this video. So we have a bow tie. That would be the second set or maybe the third progression, inside turn, cross hand, inside turn, um, and then some sort of a bow tie. Then we're going to layer on the rock and go. If you guys don't know what a rock and go is, uh, Go ahead and YouTube what is a rock and go. You're going to find the ultimate guide to a rock and go. It's about a 10 minute video we did on the rock and go. But real quickly, we lead these two hands over one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to get Megan to not anchor step, but go rock and go. So another version of this might be something like this one, two, three, and four. And then we did the rock and go, rock and go inside turn anchor step. This is still not what you see in the video. There's two more things, but let's cover this because this is getting into the meat and potatoes of what's important to this. Um, and agree, this version is still not coming out the way that the video does, but we're going to get there. So we did the inside turn. We pick up two hands, triple step. Now I have to get across the slot and lead Megan into a rock and go out of her anchor step, but into a rock and go to be able to do another inside turn. So as I go underneath, I go rock and go. Now I'm going to let go of this bottom hand and lead another inside turn. Anchor step. So if we did it from this side. We have an inside turn with a rock and go with an inside turn, but we're just kind of going through it with these two hands makes it much cooler. This might be a more approachable version of the pattern before we get to Robert and Brandy's one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight anchor step. So at this stage, Miss Megan, what are you thinking about? How do you know when you're in a pattern like this? What are you paying attention to to get this far before we get to the whole thing? Shocker. Get connected. Um, so essentially, I'm just staying connected to my partner. And when they lead me through this, when they want me to do a rock and go, I'm connected. So when uh, my lead sends me back and then forward again, I feel that. Normally, uh, you just want to your goal is to anchor step. Obviously in that type of position, I don't think you're probably gonna anchor step, but uh, as a rule, you're gonna think anchor step, and if you get a lead to go further, that is where you're gonna go. So from this side, leaders, what's gonna go on with this hand, and this is gonna segue to the hard part of it. One, two, three, and four. This left hand has to go rock and go. It's gonna allow Megan to go back and put her on that foot. So as I go underneath, rock and go. You can see that I've led her in that position 
with both hands to get her to this position. And if I took myself out of it, you can see that she's prepped so we can go inside, turn, and anchor. So now we're gonna do this, the easier version of what um, Robert and Brandy do, and then we'll do the final version, right? So we go one, two, three, and four. We do the rock and go, rock and go. Now from here, we're gonna lead the quick tunnel. Cool? Now, um, the quick tunnel, we're gonna pick it up in this position. Here is the, what we call, what do we call baby it? Baby steps. The baby steps. So we're gonna get this, my left hand behind my back, so you can see this is the setup leaders. My left hand behind my back. Now, the right hand is leading the turn initially, right? Megan's gonna duck through, then the left hand's gonna go over. At this point, leaders, I wanna take this left arm up and over her head to slide down. So we did that again. Assume the position. We'll do this from a couple different directions. Right hand leads. As this left hand comes over, I want this to be high to let go and slide down to that hand. Let's do a face in the camera so maybe they get a different angle. And then you can talk what goes on in a quick tunnel for the follower <laughs> before we do Duck. the hardcore version. Duck. For sure. Right hand leads. This goes over. My left hand goes up. Lots of room through here for my elbow. And we slide down. What the heck's going on for you? I don't know if I... there's that much room, I'll go over under again. <laughs> um, so. When the lead takes you through this move, I am thinking I need to go through the space that they have created for me. Okay, so as we go through there, you can duck through. I have a tendency to kind of go with the arm, so I'm kind of um, angled a little bit as I go through, and then I'm gonna stay down until there's space for me to come back up. Cool beans, so as you can see, to get to a move like this, and we haven't even done the final version because they do something else really cool because that's why they're legends. Um, you have to master your inside turn. In this video, that's not the place, right? Inside turn, basic footwork. You have to understand a rock and go. That's another whole thing. You have to understand some variations of how to do those with different hands and layer them together. Then you have to understand what goes on with this quick tunnel, right? So the leads and everything. But if we don't have a strong understanding of all those fundamental things of the turns, this is gonna be very, very difficult. But at the high end, the reason why they're able to pull that out is because all that's on lockdown. They're not worried about which hand they're using. They're not worried about their basic technique. So it's just a simple variation for someone at that level. Them doing the quick tunnel is just as different as them doing this inside turn with a different hand. It doesn't bug them at all because everything's on lockdown. They've got those skills. But now, here's what's magical in how they get to this. It's a performance, it's a competition, right? So if I did this this way, the way we just broke it down, you get to look at my bum and you don't get to see all the quick tunnel stuff. Here's why they're brilliant. They changed that rock and go and bended the rules like crazy to allow it to stay forward facing, right? So what they did here is, they're showmen, right? There's the audience. They did this, Robert wanted to make sure that everyone could see them on the way through the quick tunnel, right? So how did they do that? Again, they have to have that whole pattern on lockdown. The way, actually brilliant call on choosing this pattern, by the way, Megan picked this on her own. Um, all by myself. <laughs> all by yourself, yeah. So what's brilliant about it is they understand all of that in the basic way and then they twist and turn it to face the front. So everything's the same, right? But now typically the rock and go would come back this direction but Robert snuck through and landed, if you can see kind of, we were connected right there. He landed his partner, Brandy, in a direction that the quick tunnel could happen and leave it forward facing. So this is a great video um, for you to understand uh, not to skip to uh, you know, DEF CON 5 in this pattern, right? Because you have to know the inside turn. You have to know the inside turn from different positions. You have to understand the rock and go. Each of those are their own discussion. The video would be two hours long if we cover all those here. But I think more the key is understanding how we get there. Then you understand what a quick tunnel is. How do you do that quick tunnel? What's the lead and follow? Built on the bedrock of the fundamental patterns. And then from there, if you're brilliant, you have two more things to contend with. Number one, the ability to keep it forward facing, which means you have to bend that rock and go around the corner. And I'm not gonna cover the exact footwork because um, again, we could be here for a, a week, but there is no exact footwork. If you look at what Robert does with his feet, it's slightly different from what I do with my feet, but the principles remain the same. Where Megan's gonna be within certain beats of the music, 
are all built on those inside turn rock and go fundamentals. Um, and then the final thing that makes it brilliant, if you watch the whole video below, um, we played a clip in this video, but down below Megan will link up the full video. You'll notice that he uses this same setup for another brilliant moment. And this is the final brilliance of this. He uses this same setup for something like this that went into a tango position on the music. So the final piece to this puzzle is all of this technique and lead and follow and building of patterns, but then the ability to connect it brilliantly to the music. Now, I can't guarantee that I can make you Robert Royston. In fact, I can guarantee I can't make you Robert Royston. However, I can give you the fundamentals. We created a course called the Ultimate Guide to Musicality. So if you're through a bunch of that or you just have some base patterns that aren't even this complicated that you want to use um, in a musical way and connect them. The Ultimate Guide to Musicality will basically walk you through. So whether you're struggling with timing at the beginning stage, whether you're really working through the middle stage of connecting to the music, or you're trying to get to that kind of you know, champion brilliance of really understanding subtleties, that course through about 18 videos walks you through piece by piece. There's music in the course. Anything to add on that? No, it's a great course. Great course. Um, so we will link that up. We do not usually offer that on YouTube. That uh, The special that we usually offer is only offered via email, but we will link up the Ultimate Guide to Musicality at the sale price um, in the bottom of this video. So check that out. That's a great way to support us. it will be super helpful for you guys. And if you have any feedback, please leave us a comment, like and thumbs up this video. Definitely watch that video. And you can go back and rewatch. Megan will also link that up. The other breakdown from the same video. There were two brilliant uh, moves in that that were literally the same moves, but they came across much differently musically in that video. So there you go. Your teacher was right. Practice your basics. Know them really well. Practice your intermediate patterns. Know them really well. Level up. And one day, you will be pretty darn good. I can't guarantee how good.